Okay, so another update with Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. Uh, the first thing I'd say is definitely it's painfully slow um, and, and isn't really usable as an operating system at this stage. It's more about trying it out and just seeing what can work. And obviously it needs lots of optimization, but with the full RAM usage and with the USB, I think, I think it'll, be, it'll be usable. You know, if there's a certain program or, or very, very basic game that you want to be able to run, I think that's, that's a possibility. So one thing that's worth noting is I now have Steam installed, and this is the proper Windows version of Steam. So if I double click on that, and I'll keep it running so you can see in real time how long things take, just to show you, because in my other videos I had to edit it out. I always, I always mentioned that I was editing things out because it runs so slow. So you can see it's running, it's, it's loading up Steam, but very, very slowly in the background. Oh, that, wasn't, that wasn't as bad as it's been. I have managed to install some games on it. Uh, basically, this is emulating uh, an x86 desktop, really, uh, on an ARM processor, which is not ideal, uh, especially as the ARM processor is hampered by only having the one gig of RAM. So all of that kind of goes against it and really doesn't help. Uh, but it's all a work in progress. So it's still loading up in real time. It tries to connect to, to friends network. There's nothing else on this network at the moment. See, even this, this is still, believe it or not, still loading up. Um, now, if we can get this running on an SSD, it will definitely be better, but obviously we need better USB support for that to happen. Yeah, so that, that page is loaded up now and it's cycling through various things on here. So if I go to library, again, you can see very, very slow. Uh, so if I look for the games that I've got, so I put Super Crate Box because it looked like it was a very, if I click on it, let's see what happens. You can see that it very slowly gets there. I'm looking for the pull one. Oh, yeah, there you go. And I've also got, you know, if you look at the graphics on this, uh, you would think it would run, but actually it runs, but it runs too slow. And I'm not being able to scroll down at the moment. I wonder if I click here, I might. Well, that did something completely different. Oh, no, it did. It just took it right down the page. So you can see what it looks like, a sort of 2D graphics game. So let's just show you the pull one. Uh, in fact, what I'll do is close down Steam. See, even that, I've clicked on it. Takes a while, so double click on that. And I kind of figured if you, if you use Windows Store apps that were designed for ARM, that they might work well, but I'm not sure if it's still trying to emulate x86 and then emulate back to ARM in a, in a really weird, confusing way because I often found this with uh, some ARM games were incredibly slow on my little Windows, I've got an 8 inch Windows tablet and, uh, and certain games that would run well on my second generation iPod Touch would run really sluggish on that but that was the opposite way around, that was an ARM game running on an x86 uh, Atom processor. So all these things uh, aren't ideal. But with optimization, all sorts of things can happen when you look at emulation and how well certain things run. Now, I think I double clicked. Oh, yeah, I did double click on it. So there you go. This is the whole thing about me trying to keep it in real time. So if I go to log in now. So click log in. Click on practicing. You can see it's still loading up. And this is not a hard game to run. You could play online against people on this, uh, which I'll try not to. I don't know if it lets me do my own table. Oh, there you go, that's an empty table. Look. 
practice. So you can see now I can place the ball, but it's even then, <laughs> I don't know why that's come up. Click on that, uh, I can then move it around. Click on that, and if you pull down on the mouse, there you go, and hold the button. I don't know how far I can go back, and then release. There you go. So you can see, even on a really, really low end game, not great performance but again it's early days and they're doing great work already and uh, and you can see this is online because someone's already trying to uh, play a game of pool against me so let's quit out of that okay so i've also been able to get vlc working uh, the media player if i go to i've just put an mp3 on here from my ipad so if i right click that and then get it to play with the vlc not the Windows one, the Windows one's terrible, uh, but the one you download for Windows separately works really well. There you go, so that works. Uh, and the, another thing to show, and another thing to show is Fusion which is a emulator for Master System, but it does other things as well. I like the way it comes up with the, uh, the white noise, the old TV system. Now this is a really old emulator, and it looks like the, uh, it was for Windows XP and before, um, but it plays Master System ROMs at a silky smooth 20 frames a second. So if I go for Ghosts and Ghouls, I haven't got my controller plugged in, although my controller would work, I just wanna limit the amount of power that goes into uh, this adapter at the moment but as you can see it's pretty much normal speed I think maybe it's a bit slow I it's supposed to run at but that's something that would make this game easier is not a bad thing oh I didn't want that did I oh maybe I did <laughs> oh, how can I do that but as you can see, it's playable. We have sound. I don't think I'm gonna get copyright strike for that sound. So it is definitely a x86 emulator, which is working on the Raspberry Pi running proper full Windows 10 for ARM. So yeah, great. So I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.